So what we have behind me here is Roscommon Town's Royal Castle. There's not many royal castles in the country. This is a special one, and in fact, it's two castles in one. It was put here in the heart of what was O'Connor country, and the O'Connors basically ruled all of Connacht uh, for several hundred years. Um, it was started in around 1269 and was built by Edward I. It was a very big, bold statement to intimidate the O'Connors, and it was built on the edge of a lake called Loch Nain, where the O'Connors had a cran oak, they had uh, lots of ring forts in the area, special ones up in Rathbrennan, not too far from here. And one of the things that's surprising about it is the thickness of the walls. The walls are six to eight foot thick, and yet there was no guns or gunpowder around at that time. So we think this castle was a template for Harlock Castle in Wales. Uh, the designs are pretty close to the same. And this castle isn't it's only about half the size it was originally when it was built first. There were extra walls outside, and by 1307, there was a moat around the castle. It didn't have any windows in it. I know you can see windows today, but it only had arrow loops, long arrow loops, which were used for uh, longbowmen. We're looking at the back entrance where we are now from the original castle. The original entrance was on the other side of the castle. The castle itself, as you go into it uh, today, one of the first things that's above your head as you go in is what's called a murder hole. Um, so that's where, when the doors were closed, if people were attacking it, they could get boiling oil or hot water or hard rocks or whatever dropped on top of them. Um, other interesting aspects of the inside of the castle are the Great Hall, which was actually a public space. It's the one with the biggest fireplace in it but the castle was constantly being sieged by the O'Connors. They just didn't want the Normans here and they wanted to show the Normans that they weren't intimidated by them. They attacked the castle and ruined it, destroyed it so often that by the 1340s, the castle was just abandoned by the Normans. The Irish took over ownership of the castle and we kept it for about 300 years and we did absolutely nothing to it. It was like it was a useless piece of rock to us. When the English Crown did a, did a, a deal with the O'Connors to get the castle back, they then gave the castle uh, and some land to Sir Nicholas Malby. He was a soldier of fortune who had worked on the plantation of Ulster, and he had big ideas for this castle. He knocked the front wall down of the castle and made a grand avenue up to the town that he was going to completely remodel. And he put in massive amounts of windows into these big six-foot-thick walls. He put in numerous fireplaces. It was constantly, constantly under attack. And then by about 1691, we think thereabouts, there was a great fire. At this stage, the Crown, the Malbys, everybody just started to give up on the castle and it started to fall into disrepair. Um, it passed into the Essex estate and technically the Earl of Essex still owns the stones. Uh, but it's now managed by the OPW. Um, at one stage it was completely covered in ivy and so on. So they maintain the castle and it's set in a lovely little park, a lovely pond in the middle of it. Lovely children's area for playing and even a keep fit area. Local people love walking in it. The county council maintain it and it looks really well all the time. It's great to see that it's open all year round and it's free.